Now, of course, we all know for a fact that exercise can improve your cardiovascular function. It can increase your lifespan. But if that's true, then why are certain people dropping dead of heart attacks from exercise? That's the topic for today. Is there an actual danger to exercise? And the answer is uh, yes and no. It really depends on certain variables. So exercise is a type of uh, movement in your body that has a unique intensity to it, a duration to it, a recovery to it, and a frequency to it. And there's a million different types of exercises based on these four variables, okay? But exercise can be a positive or a negative stress depending on these variables right here. And I'm talking about a positive stress where it causes your body to adapt, to become stronger. Uh, versus a negative stress, which, which breaks down your body and then you don't recover and you have injuries and you have other problems, which I'm gonna get to. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about, and I'm gonna put these research studies down below because I just went through a deep dive into high intensity exercise and I found some interesting things, okay? I wanna share with you. Um, apparently when you do prolonged moderate to high intensity exercise, can actually lower your immune system, okay? At least temporarily. So apparently moderate to intense exercise can act as an immunosuppressive activity, okay? Because it can impair your T cells because it's a type of stress. In one of the studies, I found something quite interesting. All it takes to lower your immune system is one intense exercise bout, and that lowering of the immune system can last for days. But this all really depends on several things, which I'm going to get to. Primarily, your ability to recover, your health reserve, and some other things. Also, when you have this sustained high-level intense exercise, you actually increase your risk of viral infections, especially in the lungs. Another side effect would be an increased risk of heart attacks and blood clots. And I'm talking about high intensity. Now I am gonna qualify that with a few things in a bit. For example, like this really depends on your duration. So you have this high intensity, how long do you go? And that's why I always recommend something called HIT, high intensity interval training, with the key of HIT being a short duration. So when you do HIT exercises, you do in high intensity, but they're not very long, okay? So that greatly reduces these side effects. So what I'm describing is more of a high intensity that's prolonged, okay? High sustained endurance type exercise. Now in certain endurance sports, uh, whether you're doing cycle or running, there's an increased risk of irregular heart rhythms, okay? So why is that? Well, apparently when you exercise this moderate to high intensity over a period of time, your heart gets stronger, it gets bigger. Now you might think that's a good thing, but the problem with the heart is that it has uh, a set of pacemakers, okay, that regulate the heart rhythm. And apparently when the heart gets too big, it throws off those pacemakers. So that's what's behind this heart rhythm problem. So even though they're not developing a, like a pathogenic uh, enlarged heart, which is called cardiomegaly, it's kind of a exercise induced cardiomegaly, which affects the heart rhythm. And of course, high intensity exercise increases the risk of getting injuries. It can increase inflammation inside the blood vessels called endothelial injury. Why? Because there's a lot of oxygen going through the body and that oxygen is oxidative stress to the inside of the arteries. There's even something called exercise induced arterial endofibrosis. What does that mean? It means that there's inflammation inside the arteries that then turns into fibrosis and it creates um, kind of a narrowing of your arteries and even a vasospasm. And so this is not very common, but it can happen to highly trained cyclists and endurance athletes. When you're doing marathons or you're doing these long distance exercise type activities, boy, does it create a tremendous amount of stress on your body. You have to have a lot of recovery. Even the exercise program called CrossFit, I think that's great for young people, but once you get to my age, it's not good because the amount of recovery that they give you is just so short. 
I mean, I like CrossFit if they can just increase the recovery time uh, a bit more because it's an incredible workout. And I almost had a heart attack when I attempted to do it. Um, actually, that was even like five years ago because I'm 57, but it's intense. You have to be in shape and have a really good recovery to do CrossFit. Now, the other thing that high intensity exercise will do is raise cortisol. I've talked about this in a recent video. Cortisol paralyzes your immune system. It actually shuts down the immune system, okay? But low intensity exercise actually lowers cortisol. This is why if you're stressed out, long walks is a good thing. So the real important thing to take away from um, this data is that you must adjust your workout to your individual recovery level. Each person has a different recovery. I'll give you a quick example. I had a lady who came in my office long ago and uh, we had an exercise recovery training uh, little section in the office. So I had her do the bike and she raised her pulse rate to like 158. Send her home, she comes back the next day, the pulse rate is still 158, okay? There's basically no recovery. And so the recovery is not a passive thing. It's an active thing that's in your nervous system that's like a push down wave. Even if you were to run upstairs right now, you get your pulse rate high, and then you would stop and then you would check your pulse rate. It should start coming down. What causes it to come down? It's an active thing. It's actually the parasympathetic nervous system, which gets activated, that's actually pushing your uh, pulse rate down. And in practice, I had a machine that measured the parasympathetic nervous system, which is pretty cool. And that technology is called heart rate variability, which you can actually uh, check both the parasympathetic system and also the sympathetic nervous system. So number one, you need to adjust the exercise to your recovery. If you could find someone or buy a device, maybe there's one for your cell phone that can measure heart rate variability, you can find out your recovery and then you'll have some objective test. If you don't have something like that, you can actually check your pulse rate and measure the recovery time after your exercise. Is it coming down towards where you started or not? And that would be after a minute. And I will put a link down below of how to test that. But the whole goal is just to avoid overtraining. I have another example. I was in practice. Uh, this lady came in. She wasn't losing weight at all. And I'm not kidding. She was exercising six hours a day, seven days a week. I am not kidding. And she's wondering why she's not losing weight. Absolutely positively overtraining. On, I mean, it's just crazy. Another example, I had someone else uh, who um, couldn't lose weight if her life depended on it. She went to the gym. And for a whole year, she worked out every other day and she lost one pound after a whole year. Well, I found out her sleeping was crappy. So we fixed her sleeping and we didn't even have her exercise. We, we changed her diet too. And she started losing weight a lot more than that one pound. So, you know, it's all about the recovery. One really important nutrient to take if you have low recovery, if you're at risk for heart problems is vitamin D because one of the first vitamin D deficiency symptoms is weak muscle. And I'm not talking about just your skeletal muscle, I'm talking about the cardiac muscle too. So this is very protective against heart attacks and it can strengthen your immune system at the same time. Number three, omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils, sardines, cod liver oil, all real good for recovery. If you work out and you wanna speed up your recovery, omega-3, can help you. And number four, increase the recovery between your HIT workouts. So if you're going to do this intense exercise for a minute, don't just recover for 30 seconds. Go two or three minutes of recovery before you start that intense exercise bout again. And that also has to do with the frequency of days of the week that you work out. If you're over the age of 45 or 50, like myself, you may benefit from having a couple more days between your workout. So let's say you work out two days a week or three days a week, but you at least give enough time to recover. And with some people, depending on the intensity of that workout, I will just say, just rest for like three or four days. And oh my goodness, do they feel better? 
you start losing weight, things start coming back because they've been having this low-grade inflammation and just not giving their body a chance to fully recover between the exercise bouts. Now, why do people drop dead of heart attacks from exercise, perfectly young, healthy people? For various reasons, if they're doing some type of moderate to intense exercise, sustained activity, and there's anything else at the same time that's affecting their immune system, that can put them over the edge, okay? Because their immune system is already predisposing them to have a problem with the heart. So, and I have done videos on this topic. I'm not gonna get too far into the woods with that, but anything added stress to your body while you're doing intense exercise can push you over the edge. Also lack of sleep can increase the risk for having more problems. Higher carbohydrates can put you more at risk because the high carb diet increases the sympathetic nervous system and also prevents sleeping. Also low nutrients. The main nutrient deficiency that affects the heart, especially um, angina or heart attacks is vitamin E. So the more stress you go through, the less sleep you have, the more vitamin E you're gonna need, especially for the heart. And I would recommend tocotrienols versus the tocopherol brands. Okay, now we have age, right? The older you are, uh, the less intense you really can handle. So this variable alone can put you at risk for a lot of issues. Now, there's always exceptions. I had another patient who came in, 80 years old, you know, looked pretty young. I did that test on him, that recovery test. And uh, he had a recovery of like a 28 year old, okay? And I was shocked. And one thing that was interesting is that uh, he was walking his dog in the dark and he tripped in a hole and he fell down and he knocked himself out and he, he had some bleeding in his, um, in his skin and things. And within like a day, he just healed right up. Amazing, right? So this guy, apparently when he was younger, took uh, the Olympics in water polo. And he's been maintaining his health ever since with exercise at least. And uh, he can still at, at 80 years old, hold his breath for three minutes underneath the water. So again, there's always an exception to the rule. And if you can keep up your training consistently and not overtrain, you know, you can actually really create a bulletproof immune system. Altitude. Apparently, the higher altitude you are, the more risk you are when you exercise for heart problems. Like right now, where I'm living, it's we're 3,000 feet above sea level. When I have friends or family that come out to where I live and we're walking up hills, boy, did they get out of breath real easy because they have not adapted. If we have them exercised, that can add another strain. So these are just variables I want to bring your attention to. So that way you can exercise and avoid uh, a bigger problem. Now, if you want more information about determining your recovery, I put that video up right here. Check it out.